Venezuelan hairy frog. What's wrong with you? Look at them. They're bored to tears. What happened to Mr. Clark? I know. The Mr. Clark who did assemblies with explosions and special effects and, and floating heads. Come on, man. Where are the special effects? Where are the floating heads? You know what? You know what? You've changed. Talk to the hand, frog boy. I'll show you special effects. You know, when we last met, I was but the learner. Now, I am the master. Only the master of evil. What am I doing? That's a much better idea. As you probably know, the lightsaber effects you've just seen first featured in 1977's all conquering blockbuster Star Wars. Initially, the lightsabers weren't going to be done using special effects, but using physical methods. Props were covered in very high reflective tech, and then a very, very strong light shone onto them. However, the effects were disappointing, and in the end, the special effects artist had to go through the whole film, painting in the glow manually, frame by frame. Nowadays, with the aid of a computer, lightsaber effects can be quite easily created, even if it's still a bit time consuming, and any idiot with a computer and a cheap prop can be a Jedi. <laughs> Star Wars wasn't the only big budget special effects laden blockbuster of the 1970s. In 1978, Superman, starring Christopher Reeves as the Man of Steel, was released in cinemas with the tagline, You'll believe a man can fly. Reeves flew using wires and a technique called back projection, where the actor is suspended in front of a large cinema, displaying the moving background. Superman cost $55 million to produce, which translates as a staggering $170 million in today's money, with the then cutting-edge special effects taking up a huge part of that budget. Jump forward 28 years, and with a home PC, a camera, and some specialist editing software, you can produce effects such as this. Effects are now being used more than ever to clean shots up. Don't like the colour of an actor's shirt? No problem, we can change it. Film a scene and realise your lead actor isn't even in it? No problem, we can go back and put them in later on. Features such as motion tracking make blue screening easier than ever. While we normally associate special effects with spectacular explosions or other elements that are normally very CGI orientated, more and more special effects are being done completely unawares. For example, it is much cheaper to film indoors and then add maybe backgrounds than it is actually to fly the actors or actresses out to the location. Hit TV shows such as Desperate Housewives, CSI and Lost contain many special effects that the audience are completely unaware of that are actually happening. It's no secret how far visual effects have come in the last few decades. CGI has had a lot to do with this. No filmmaker can now expect to make a serious production without some form of computer-based effects. Over the next 20 years, who knows how much further we'll go. If 30 years ago George Lucas was told he'd make a Star Wars prequel filmed almost entirely against a green screen with mostly computer-generated actors, he'd have laughed. When John Laster decided to make an entirely computer-generated short film in 1986, no one would have guessed that 17 years later he'd be behind the biggest animated hit ever in Finding Nemo. We live in a very fast-moving world. What costs millions now may be easy 20 years from now, and there's no way to predict what technological advances will be made and what areas computers will be an essential part of. Keep your options open. The future is changing. Will you be able to change with it?
gonna have to be a different